Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with the very first in a monthly series reviewing the stocks that we talk about here on the channel, the stocks I'm buying and how they're doing. Accountability is very important to me and I think it's something you just don't get from other investing channels here on YouTube. So I want to be totally transparent reviewing even the worst picks as well as the best. It's also going to be the first drink with me video each month as we review that group of stocks. I'm going to be enjoying my favorite adult beverage because well, why not? So make sure you watch to the end because the filter is coming off. And for our first month, all you out there in the nation know I'm a big fan of Jack Daniels whiskey. So I'm going to be having that on the rocks. It's a nice sweet touch to the kick of whiskey. And as a bonus, it's probably enough sugar in here to ensure that I croak of diabetes before my liver gives out. So there's always that. So enjoy whatever you're drinking. Drink responsibly, obviously. Uh, know that I'll probably be, make, be making a lot of mistakes here and uh, filter's going to come off. So drinking game, anytime I curse, feel free to take a drink. Now, a couple of notes here before we get into those stocks that I'm buying. Nine of the biggest positions in my portfolio, but please nation, I've said it over and over again. I don't want you investing in these stocks just because I or any YouTuber talks about it. I see all the time in the comments, people just asking for that list of stocks in the video without any research or analysis that we do here on the channel. Nation, blindly following your any YouTuber into a stock is not a good investing strategy. You don't know if they did that research that, that I'm doing here on the channel or in the videos. It's why besides that research behind the stocks, I'm always trying to show you the how of investing in these videos. Things like that core satellite strategy that is going to make sure you reach your financial goals. Second here, and we're going to get right into those stocks, but if you are going to invest in a stock because you see it here in one of these videos or, or in any video on a YouTube channel, please continue to watch the videos. We're going to see a couple of examples of this, but I see daily in the comments asking if I'm still holding one stock or another that I clearly talked about selling it in several videos. Now, a good example of this is Republic First Bank Corp, ticker FRBK. I started buying after that banking crisis destroyed the shares and ended up with an investment of about $26,400 at a cost basis of $0.88 cents a share. I ended up selling May 18th at $1.16 per share for a 32% gain, just over $8,400 profit. I announced that sell in the newsletter, in a video, and on social, but I still get comments asking if I'm still holding it and if somebody should sell the stock. Nation, the point is, even if you subscribe to a channel, YouTube does not do a good job of showing you those videos. If you're going to be investing in a stock, because a YouTuber is investing in themselves, whether it's here or on another channel, if you're waiting for that YouTuber to tell you when to sell that stock, then you have got to be watching those videos. Uh, again, I want you to make your own decisions, your own investing decisions based on your own research. But if that's how you're going to do it, please make sure you're watching those videos. So let's cover some of the stocks I've talked about over the last month, as well as some of the biggest holdings in my portfolio. And let's start off with the short term investments video I did on the 11th of last month. Uh, most of the stocks I buy are buy and hold long term investments. I like to get those gross stocks with a three to five year potential. But every once in a while, I'll look for these short term ideas as well. Let's start with the very short term investment of AMC Entertainment, ticker AMC here. We started investing in these shares a couple of months ago on some very real catalysts that should push the share price higher, as well as maybe even force a short squeeze. There was the share sell that improved its liquidity. Yeah, it sucked for uh, current investors because it diluted their shares. It brought those share prices down. We started buying at that point, uh, but it really improved liquidity, took that existential risk of a bankruptcy off the table. Then we had the Swift concert, the Taylor Swift concert, the Eris concert, broke all pre-sale records, $100 million in pre-sales. And then now we have the third quarter earnings season coming up. What I think they'll be able to say in November 8th of the earnings season. And I'm going to talk about this, but I think a lot of the price or a lot of the valuation has come out of this stock. It's already up to 1030. It was as high as 1105 uh, when we sold out of the position. But what I'm thinking here is that November 8th, when the company talks about its third quarter earnings, it's going to beat expectations on the Barbie and Oppenheimer events, the blockbusters that happened over that third quarter. And then even more importantly, it's going to be able to talk up its fourth quarter revenue with not only the Taylor Swift concert, but also the Beyonce Renaissance Tour concert that's happening in December. So it's going to be able to have some very good news for investors there on November 8th when it comes out. Now, again, I did sell out of this position already. I built up a cost basis over 6,000 shares at $9.05, sold at $11.05, made that announcement on, on a video, on social, as well as on the community tab there. It's a gain of about $12,000 or about 22% in less than a month. 
again, there could still be some upside here in that November 8th earnings announcement, but I think a lot of the easy money has come out of this stock. We're going to get right back to our list. But first, I want to personally invite you to get the weekly bow tie, our free weekly newsletter with all the stock market news, strategies, and trends you need to see. Each week before the market opens, I'll show you what I'm watching and the stocks that could highlight the week. It's all totally free, just something I like to do for all you out there in the community. So look for that sign up link below. Next here, another short term investment we highlighted was the downward pressure on the dollar. And we highlighted this Invesco US dollar index bearish fund, basically the UDN, a fund that goes up when the value of the dollar against other currencies goes down. Now, the outlook here behind investing was those higher interest rates and the geopolitical uh, tension drove the value of the dollar up against a lot of other currencies just as a safe haven uh, asset okay when you can get higher interest rates in the united states versus other currencies people from other currencies are going to bring their currencies in transfer it into U.S. dollar and buy treasuries for those higher rates. That drives up the value of the dollar, as well as that geopolitical risk that we've been seeing. But it's now facing a downside meltdown. Okay, there is chaos in Congress. They just finally elected a new Speaker of the House, but they're still facing that November 17th shutdown. Now, they might extend that deadline for the uh, for the funding for the government. They might go into full shutdown mode. Lower rates on shutdown fears could happen. This is all going to dr help drive the U.S. dollar back down. What we talked about there was a call spread on the US on the UDN, something like a buying the $18 calls and selling the $19 calls. It's come down a little bit there. The price at that time was $18.34 for the UDN. That's come up a little bit, but the volatility has really come out of that. Now, I still do like this trade. I still do think that as we get closer to that November 17th shutdown, the value of the dollar is going to come under pressure as the world really thinks it rethinks its holdings of U.S. dollar. So I still like this trade, either buying the UDN outright for that $18.37 or going in like we said, like we said in that video, and I'll link to that video in the description below, but buying the $18 calls, selling the $19 calls for that call spread going to get you a really nice return if it goes up to $19 or higher. In that short-term investments video, we also talked about advanced auto parts, ticker AAP. This is one I'm investing in for a little bit longer time period than, than just a one or a two month time period. This stock has been basically flat there over the last month since the 11th, but big news could be coming in the November 15th earnings. Okay, O'Reilly Auto Parts, a main competitor, beat its earnings estimate and saw the stock jump 6% on its earnings. So I'm hopeful that Advanced Auto Parts is also going to be able to beat its estimates. The CEO has just destroyed this company over the last six years. It has underperformed its major competitors of O'Reilly as well as, as well as the other auto parts store. But there are some very favorable industry tailwinds and it's getting a new CEO, CEO, new management team. I think this stock goes much higher over here. Last month, retail sales actually showed strength in auto parts spending, as well as those favorable industry tailwinds for car ages. Okay, the average age of cars on the road in the US getting right into that sweet spot there for mechanics visits, for breaking down and, and uh, needing more auto parts. If we look at the valuation differences on these stocks, Advanced Auto Parts versus its major competitors, O'Reilly and AutoZone here, we can see that Advanced Auto Parts here trading for just 8.9 times on a trailing PE and a price to earnings basis, just 0.27 times on a price to sales basis. And not only it's it's comparison against its competitors here, you always wanna look at where it's traded in the past on a price to sales. So we can see the price to sales of about 0.3 times uh, price to revenue. It's traded in the past 0.8 times, 0.6. So it is trading less than half of what it usually trades at and on a price to revenue basis. What that means is if the company can turn around, if it can return to growth, if, if it can get investor sentiment boosted off of some of that new management changes here, then that could go up to 0 0.6, 0 0.8 times on a price to sales and a much higher valuation multiple. But if we just compare it to some of these other ones as well, we see here O'Reilly trading for 24 times price to earnings. Okay, that is three times where Advanced Auto Parts is trading right now. Price to sales of 3.6 times, more than 10 times what... Uh, what advanced auto parts is trading for AutoZone trading 18 times price to earnings price to sales of 2.7 times. So you see they discount the valuation discount in shares of advanced auto parts. Yes, it deserves it. Yes, it has uh, been losing market share to its competitors over the last six years under the CEO. But again, it's getting a new CEO, new management team, the industry tailwinds for those car ages and favorable uh, retail spending for auto parts is going to prop up this uh, this entire industry. And I think this is a great deal right here. Now you can see I've started buying the stock since the end of May when it really 
really came down on some of those bad earnings. I'm down 26% in this position, but that covered call strategy, I'm using offsets about $2,500 of that. So I do have some downside risk hedge on that. I still like this idea. I think if the company can't turn itself around, if management can't reboost uh, boost growth and, and take some of that market share back from its competitors that it's lost, I think private equity or some kind of uh, you know activist investor jumps in here. This is exactly the kind of company that private equity and activist investors like to deal in because they've got a great brand name. They've got good market share within an industry. They've got favorable industry tailwinds. So the macroeconomic environment, the big picture environment is going to be boosting this stock or boosting this company as well as its competitors. Uh, and any kind of a turnaround could see a huge valuation uh, valuation rise from this company. So if, if management can't bring that about within the next year, I'd say I bet an activist investor comes in, buys up the shares, and that's going to boost the share price as well. Medical Properties Trust, ticker MPW. Just a minute, got to refill my go juice here because this one is brutal. A lot of people asking about this stock lately. Had some really good news uh, there this last week on the earnings. So we're going to talk about that, talk about why I'm still investing, why I think this one goes way higher and uh, and really makes makes a lot of that money back that we've lost, but then uh, and even more so. You know, this is still the nation's largest largest hospital uh, real estate owner in the United States. You all know I love real estate. I got my start as a commercial real estate analyst, but um but the real estate has been getting slammed by higher rates, but that should be temporary, right? Okay, so obviously, you know, real estate is highly leveraged. It's a lot of commercial real estate is funded on short-term debt that only pays interest. So when they go to refinance those debts, you know, over three to five years, if that interest rate has gone up like we've seen it has in the past, uh, in the past year and a half, the Fed raising interest rates fastest pace in 40 years, that is a real problem for commercial real estate, okay? And it's hit, it's hit hospital owners just as well as it's hit all real estate. Real estate uh, overall was down 25% last year. It's down another 18% this year. But again, this is temporary. You know, once uh, once the economy starts contracting, once we see that inflation rate come down, the Fed is also going to have a lot of room to lower interest rates. I think as we see the Fed get <clears throat> as we see the Fed get closer to those interest rate cuts next year, probably mid 2024, you're going to see a lot of support for commercial real estate. You're going to see a lot of stocks that have get gotten hit hard, like Medical Properties Trust, really rise. Now that said, I did start buying last October at about ten dollars a share and built up about 4,850 share positions for about $9.28 cost basis. So it's quite a bit down from here. We did see those shares pop 15% on the quarter quarterly earnings Thursday. Going to talk about that, talk about what they said, but it has been a big disappointment. You know, management continues to go all in on the two biggest tenant when tenants when they probably should have cut their exposure to those long ago, but they didn't, but this is probably about as bad as it gets. It still has those 441 properties with strong value. Debt that is covered through 2024. Thing you got to understand about MPW folks is the big the big overhang on this stock is that ex existential risk that it can't repay its debt. It's got like it's got billions of dollars in debt uh, due 2025, 2026, but short term 2024 debt is covered. Uh, it's got some asset sales coming that it's going to get it through 2025. We can go here to the uh, to the earnings announcement. Why the stock was up 15% there on uh, on Tuesday on that earnings announcement, and one of the bullet points here. They talked about an aggressive debt repayment through expected liquidity transactions over the next 12 months. Now, liquidity transactions, what are those? Well, it means the company is going to be selling some of its properties. Okay, it's already sold it's some of its Australian properties. It's going to be selling some of those 441 properties to be able to pay down that debt that's due in 2025, 2026. Really take that existential risk off the table that's overhanging the stock. Okay, now, of course, it's not a great time to be selling real estate, but it's kind of a forced situation. That's fine. It's going to get it's going to get what it can for some of those properties, and it's going to be able to uh, to stay as a going concern. And investors are going to see that that share price rise. If we look at data from the National Association of REITs, this NAREIT data here, it shows this stock is trading for a price of just 4.7 times that funds from operations, that FFO metric that we use for real estate investment trusts. Okay, so 4.7 times FFO price valuation. That's versus an average that is more than double that. Okay, and and when times are good for real estate owners, that that price multiple is even higher than that, even higher than 10 and 15 times price to FFO basis. So what I'm saying is once we get through this interest rate, um, once we get through this interest rate pain for real estate, those price valuations go up 
10, 12, 15 times FFO. And you see, you can see this medical properties trust double or triple in that amount. FFO payout ratio here is actually about 40% after the dividend cut. MPW did cut its dividend earlier this year to about 15 cents a share on a quarterly basis. That frees up a lot of cash to be able to pay off that debt, be able to keep the, keep the company going. This is all an interest rate story. Again, I'm expecting the Fed to start cutting rates mid-2024. That's going to really support all real estate prices as well as MPW. DraftKings, ticker DKNG. This is one of my favorite long-term stocks right now, mostly because it is a 129% return in my portfolio. We're really betting on this outlook look in sports betting that online gambling is a huge growth industry. 55% growth in sports betting revenues year over year to $12 billion this next year. Still only in 38 states. Okay, with sports betting, we're still missing the ginormous states like here in Florida, like California. When sports betting gets legalized in those two states across and across the country, you're going to see even more growth in this industry. D DraftKings controls 27% of that uh, of that sports betting market, second only to FanDuel. It's got a great lead in that, and it's going to continue to grow along with this market. Besides that industry growth, we're also seeing DraftKings really grow into its own business. Besides this average monthly unique payers growing from, from $2 million to $2.8 million here this year, it is also getting more revenue revenue per payer. Okay, more peop people are betting more and, and spending more on the app from $67 last year to $92 this year. That is a, almost a 50% increase in average revenue per monthly unique payer. I started buying the shares last October. It's up 117% on my position, 129% just this year alone, about a $43,000 profit on that position. But I'm holding this longer term. I think it really grows into the industry as well as becomes more efficient in the company itself, really boosting that stock price. I do have a covered call on 500 shares here. It's costing me about $4,500 of that profit right now. That is the downside of this covered call strategy. Okay. You do collect that premium upfront, that cash upfront. It lowers your downside risk. But if the shares take off like they have with DraftKings, then you really do uh, lose some money on that. But it's only 500 shares. It's a small portion of the of the, uh, of the total position. So I'm going to continue to hold the rest of those shares and, uh, and see where those go over the next three to five years. One of the longest positions in my portfolio here, Teva Pharmaceuticals, ticker TEVA. Uh, really outlook here is putting that M&A debt and opioid crisis behind it, still a terrifically undervalued. So if you haven't been following shares of Teva a long time ago, they were in kind of a mergers and acquisition strategy. Okay, no growth in their generic drug market. So they were just acquiring other companies and putting on tens of billions of dollars in debt. Of course, those uh, acquisitions never go as planned. That debt started weighing on them through that interest expense. Uh, and so the stock price really suffered on that. Then they got caught in the opioid crisis, had to settle that for, uh, for millions of dollars and uh, really weighed on the stock as well, billions of dollars actually. But they put those behind them, they settled that opioid crisis suit, and is terrifically undervalued. If we compare the valuation on shares of Teva Pharmaceuticals, the largest generic drug manufacturer in the world with some of these other drug manufacturers, we're looking at this price, uh, this enterprise value to revenue for Teva. We can see that in the past, it's traded for as high as eight times on an enterprise value to revenue, seven times here, right now trading for under two times enterprise value to revenue. Okay, so so less than a third of where it has in the past. Uh, again, like we look at for all all these stocks that we're looking at, if the investor sentiment comes back into this stock, if it can boost that valuation multiple up to what it does normally, even six times enterprise value to, to revenue, that is three times the current stock price. It could go up to it could go up to twenty four dollars a share just on that revaluation based on those multiples. But I also want to look at these other these comparison drug makers, see where they're trading at and where. Tiva Pharmaceuticals could trade at uh, if it, you know, if it puts some of these other risks and these other uh, and this investor sentiment, poor investor sentiment behind it. So if we look at Gilead Sciences here. Another large drug maker trading for four times on a price enterprise value to revenue, uh, very much below its own. Now, a lot of these are going to have their own risks and their own idiosyncrasies to those stocks. So we don't know why uh, Gilead is trading so far below its own uh, historic enterprise value to revenue metric as well, but it's still trading for four times enterprise value to revenue. Okay, more than twice what Tiva is trading for. Bristol Myers Squibb, if we look here, 3.6 or uh, no, three three times enterprise value to revenue. So further still down, but still even further above or still further above Tiva. Okay, so Tiva trading for about 1.85 times enterprise value to revenue. 
Bristol Myers Squibb trading for a very low three times enterprise value to revenue, but still very much higher than that uh, Tiva, almost twice of what Tiva is trading for. Go to Amgen here finally. Amgen trading for six times on an enterprise value to revenue. And we do see here that all the drug manufacturers trading for less than their historic uh, enterprise value to revenue statistics. So it seems like something is going on in drug manufacturing that is bringing investors or bringing investors out of these stocks. You know, the mul multiples are coming down, so they are under pressure, all of them. But if we just look at the comparison, six times enterprise value to revenue, more than three times what we saw on Tiva. But bringing it back to Tiva, 1.85 times enterprise value to revenue that is even even in the worst circumstances should not be that low should be at least three or four times even if it were to match bristol myers squibb three times enterprise value to revenue if we got three divided by where it's trading at right now 1.85 that is a 62 percent higher 62 percent return 8.44 that is a 13 60 dollars per share 13 dollars and 68 cents per share where tiva could could be trading for even if it just came up to that three times enterprise value to revenue, uh, to revenue multiple that Bristol Myers Squibb is trading for. You can see this is one of my largest positions in my portfolio. See, I've owned it since 2019 and an average cost basis of about $7.88 is that top line here. And then all the times that I've bought more shares in the bottom there, uh, when it hit $11 this past year, I was up $65,000 or about 40%. It is now down back down to uh, just over about a 3% upside. Obviously, uh, it's an Israeli company, so it got hit on that war with Israel and Hamas. This is a strong stock, though. It's going to keep on going. It's going to go back up to that 10. I've got a share price target of about 12 to $15 over the next couple of years. SoFi Technologies, ticker SOFI, another one of the biggest positions in my portfolio. I want to talk about this because we had some big news yesterday with the earnings, but it really disappointed in how that traded throughout the day. Shares were up about 10% on the news, uh, on that earnings announcement, 10% in the pre-market and as the shares started trading, but then ended the day just 1% up. Okay, we do see it is up. 6.8% today. So investors coming back into the stock. I'm going to tell you why it why it jumped initially, then sold off, and why it's up today, why I'm still holding the stock, and might actually consider buying more at these prices. So if we dig into those third quarter earnings reports, we can see why the stock jumped initially. This, this bank, this online bank, is still dominating its space, still adding lots of members, grew members to 717,000 uh, there in the third quarter. That's 47% increase over the last year. Still seeing huge deposits. I think deposits tripled over the last uh, over the last year as really even a lot of regional banks actually lose deposits in that banking crisis. So SoFi is actually one of the few banks that is adding deposits, adding members. Uh, I think the CEO Noto said that said that 90% of its members are on direct deposit. Okay, so they have direct automatically every every week, every couple of weeks, their their pay coming into their account. Okay, that is their primary account that is very stable as far as deposit growth. It's really going to help this company uh, pay for its products. What you have to understand about SoFi is that it has a banking license that is puts it so far ahead of a lot of other fintech companies that don't have that banking license. Basically, with that banking license, they can offer savings, they can offer checking, they can offer all those traditional bank products, and they can collect those deposits by collecting deposits and having a deposit account for its customers. It gets that cheap funding for its uh, loans. Okay, most other fintech online banks they don't have that bank license, so they have to rely on debt financing. They have to rely on on equity financing that dilutes its shareholders to pay for their loans, the, the loans that it makes on those higher rates. Okay, SoFi doesn't have to do that. It is growing its deposits, growing its member base, and with very cheap, not super cheap, it's still paying about four and a half, five percent yield on those uh, cash savings deposits, but very much cheaper than those other fintech competitors are doing. That is really helping to boost its products, boost its loans, and uh, boost its net interest margin. Now, going further into the third quarter earnings announcement, and we're going to see why the shares, uh, while they popped initially, why they did sell off. If we look here into quarterly adjusted net revenue, net revenue grew 27% in the third quarter versus the year ago, the same period last year to $531 million. So 27% net, uh, net revenue growth is huge for a bank or really almost any company. It is still a growth stock. But if you look that look at that year over year growth, you see why the share sold off. Okay, 51%, 58, 43, all the way down to 27. This is a, a growth stock that is losing its growth. Okay. 
still very strong growth. It is still a very, has very strong growth to come, but that growth is declining. And that's what investors were looking at. Investors getting a little worried about the valuations on the stock as well as declining growth. And so, you know, they didn't, they, they took off some of that profit off of the table into the end of the close of yesterday. That said, and I think why we see the stock bounce back up 6.8% today is because this is still a very much a growth stock and is going to go higher. You know, it hit uh, 10, $11, it hit $11 and 70 cents earlier this year, just as the, uh, the prospect of the student loan forbearance comes off as it moves into new revenue, it actually is getting into investment banking. Okay. So it was involved in the, the Instacart IPO as well as several other IPOs this year that is bringing in a new revenue source. Folks, this bank is growing into a legitimate bank. It is still very small compared to other regional banks and other the larger banks, but its deposits and user growth is uh, is growing and it's being able to fund that growth into other parts of traditional banking. Another sip of go juice here, but this one's a congratulatory sip because this stock has done very well. I'm going to continue to hold it. It's going to continue to do very well. It's one of the largest positions in my portfolio started buying this last December, built up a 21,000 share position at a cost basis of $5.74 each. Everybody said I was crazy to be buying this stock after it had fallen so much from the pandemic. Started buying there in December after it had come down quite a bit. It's come down off that peak of $11.70 a share this year. Obviously, in the market pullback, those growth stocks are going to get hit harder. I was up $125,000. But even here, even after coming back down to uh, to about $7 a share, it's up now uh, just recently. But even here, I'm still up $25,000. And this is a long-term stock. Okay, This is going to go up to $15 plus per share as it grows into that legitimate bank. Shares of WW International, ticker WW, the old Weight Watchers there, started buying this quite a while ago, uh, about to exit the position. Here, I've got some covered calls against this that are going to exit it because it has done very well. You can see here, just uh, over the last, over the year to date, in March, it was trading right Right around four dollars a share it is now uh, it was up as high as eleven dollars and thirty cents earlier thirteen dollars earlier uh, just over the last couple of months it's come down now seven dollars and eighty cents we're going to talk about why it's come down why i think it's come down and people are are kind of taking profits on this uh, i am holding it for a little bit longer through the earnings announcement because i think those those will be good but this is a strong brand and reliable cash flows on what was really a beaten down stock okay we started investing here uh, around four dollars a share i'm going to show you the uh, results of that here in a little bit started buying this because it was very strong cash flow positive company very strong brand and i believed it would come back and what happened to really boost these shares into a double and triple times what they were is it announced that it was going to be working with doctors to prescribe those uh, those weight loss drugs okay obviously weight watchers has always been you know diet 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 uh, and that hasn't gone so well for them over the last uh, decade okay and it hasn't gone so well for a lot of its customers now that it's starting to uh, get into those weight loss drugs, use that as a supplement to diet and exercise. It is uh, obviously getting a lot more investor interest. You can see here, I started buying in 2021, built up about 15,000 share position for a cost basis of about $6.62 each. Uh, when it was at $13 a share, that was a lot of profit. It's come down to $7.90 here, a $7.80 in the market right now for about $19,000 gain. That's still about a 20% gain. And the reason why these shares are coming down right now, not just the market pullback, but I think because because the, uh, the earnings come out on November 2nd, so actually tomorrow, earnings come out for this, investors are worried that it can't deliver on that promise of those new weight loss drugs. Okay, obviously, the weight loss drugs had a big factor in boosting these shares, uh, boosting the outlook on revenue, on earnings. If the company cannot deliver that on that, or at least say something good about the future for that prospect, then obviously, you know, these shares are going to come under pressure. I think it does do well on that revenue and earnings, maybe not as well as the market expects. Maybe these shares, shares come down a little bit more, but uh, I think you buy at those, uh, if it comes down, if it dips lower, I think you buy in and, and I think these shares see, you know, nine, $10 a share again within the next few months. We've still got one of the biggest positions in my portfolio, one stock that I think could triple from here over the next few years. But if you want to see the stocks I'm buying for the next 30 years, my forever stocks, click on the video here. There's a new updated list. I've added some stocks. I've taken some out. So make sure you check that video out. ChargePoint Holdings, ticker CHPT. I got to take another drink on this one because this is actually the biggest loss on my portfolio right now, but actually one of the biggest upsides as well. I think this one really does well. I think triples, quadruples over the next few years. I'm going to show you why here in just a minute. 
but this is a uh, okay so you know obviously electric vehicles have come down quite a bit all the the car makers all the related stocks have come down on that warnings for electric vehicle demand obviously ford gm uh, rivian losing a lot of money on those cars but just uh, just looking at tesla it proves that you can sell uh, sell electric vehicles at a profit okay i think it's just a matter of time before these other car companies ford gm rivian some of these other ones actually bring their cost of production down and are able to sell those at a profit okay and when they're going to want to sell a whole lot more of them we are moving towards that electric future towards the electric vehicles they're going to be a lot cheaper to, to own I and mean, we can look here at previous expectations for electric vehicles as a percentage of cars okay and right now 2023 it says about 7.2 it's actually about right around eight percent of vehicles sold this year are electric vehicles at about 1.1 million vehicles sold this year previous expectations were for 2030 to it to grow to about 30 000, or 30 percent of cars about 4.7 million even if that is not met okay even with this slower uh, slower demand that the electric vehicle manufacturers the car makers are reporting uh, even if that slows for the next couple of years until interest rates come down until demand comes back in to these cars even if that is slower and it only reaches maybe say 20 percent of uh, of all vehicles sold by 2030 that is still millions more cars sold each year that is still about three and a half three and a half million cars uh, a year electric vehicles sold each year and charging is the big bottleneck in electric vehicles right now okay being able to charge your car so you can make those longer road trips government subsidies are coming to boost this industry okay so the administration with that ira with the inflation reduction act is putting hundreds of billions of dollars to uh you know to electric vehicles and charging stations a lot of these companies including charge point are going to get a piece of that and if you look at uh, charge point revenues just compared to ev penetration okay ev cars sold here it is directly proportional so as that as that electric vehicle um, cars sold per year rises and we see that even 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 if it meets that or even if it misses that 30 percent target by 2030 even if it hits 20 percent, that's still three and a half million cars sold each year up from one million sold this year that is going to drag this stock higher on that need for charging stations charge point is the clear leader in level two charging that fast charging that you get not only in the u.s but in europe of course it's not all rainbows and unicorns okay this is the big dog for my portfolio lately with shares down 70 percent just since the end of july i actually started buying there in september so as it started coming down anyway built up a cost basis of about three dollars and 73 cents on 46,000 shares so i'm still down 33 percent down fifty seven thousand dollars but i'm going to tell you again why i think this this stock goes higher from here you can see uh, i started buying there in september and have bought down on the dip on that again i think this recent drop in electric vehicle demand is temporary as we get those lower rates next year we're going to get uh, higher demand for all vehicles but especially these uh, higher priced electric vehicles charge point just had a liquidity event where it sold some uh, debt as well as convertible stock that hit the shares a little bit but cleared up its uh, liquidity needs through next year and into 2025 so there is no existential bankruptcy risk for this company it has all the funding it needs into the next year we'll probably have to raise more cash in 2025 but this is a very strong growth stock trading for insanely low valuations we can look at analyst estimates here for revenue and we see revenue is expected to grow 33 percent this year 42 percent next year now obviously on lower demand for electric vehicles that might come down a little bit but this is a, still a stock growing at 30 percent plus a year as that electric vehicle demand increases as we get more charging stations out there and as those government subsidies come through for the for the company to build out its charging infrastructure i think you're going to see this revenue continue to rise 30 40 percent and bringing this together for why i think this stock could triple quadruple from here and even higher over the long term you look at valuations remember this is a stock growing at 30 percent revenue 30 percent plus revenue a year trading for just 1.5 times on a price to sales basis now obviously all the investors have just fallen out of love with ev right now but if you look at the history for this stock 6 10 14 times on a price to sales basis even if as those sales start growing even if it just comes down back to that six times price to sales valuation which would be typical which would be fair value for a growth stock six divided by 1.5 that is four times the current stock price so this stock price could rise four times back up to ten dollars a share just on those average historical price to sales multiples so that's a four times upside just on a return to average multiples and then you've got the 30 percent revenue growth each year this is a 10x stock over the next five or six years
Keep up to date with the stocks I'm buying as well as all the stock market news you need to see with the weekly bow tie, all free with the link below. Or click on the video to the right for the stocks I'm buying for the next 30 years, my forever stocks. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.